Today, in this interview with the legendary Steve Toff, we'll be talking about his ChatGPT AI SEO workflows. It's going to be a masterclass on how to use ChatGPT. Gem and I will be talking about link building, some of the best ways to use AI safely, and also some of his best tactics and hacks to rank number one with SEO. Let's go. So what's your take on the Google update so far? It seems like this tsunami has come and Google's definitely exercising their fear, uncertainty, and doubt to the maximum degree. But if you've been in SEO long enough, you've seen those types of actions. And I think even though people are a bit shaken on this one and rightfully as time goes on, we'll learn to adapt. Uh, what have you seen so far? Obviously it's early days. What have you seen so far? If I could just take a, a step back from that, there is obviously tons of chatter and tons of people with pretty legit sites getting de-indexed, not only the ones who are you know really abusing things. I have a lot of sympathy for, for those people, but I think when it comes to Google, they're, they're, they, they, they have this big, huge problem on their hands, right? If every result on page one is AI and reads like a robot Reddit, that's a threat to their public perception. And that's something that it has been unprecedented in terms of things they have to worry about. And they're not going to be able to quote unquote, catch everybody who uses AI content. And not every instance of AI content is necessarily a bad experience, but Google's never been threatened this way ever. And, and I think they wanted to send a message and that's what they did. Yeah, that makes sense. And have you got any examples of sites that are really high quality, but have taken a bit of a hit? I looked at Travel Lemming. That's one that I had on my radar back when I was working for a competitor of theirs. And the site, pretty, you look at that site and it's pretty quality. I, I'd say that would be one example of one that, that suffered an unfortunate fate. Oh, I have to check that out, definitely. Yeah, I think we, we should come on to some ways to humanize the content and improve the quality later in this interview. A lot of people are asking, is AI SEO dead? I think the, what's going to die is like people who are lazy. There's probably a lot of people just hitting the run button on whatever AI content tool there is and not even reading the output. I think that's just a recipe for disaster and a stupid thing to do. Nonetheless, whether you're going to get caught on Google or not, that's not a, a good long-term strategy for your website. I don't think AI content is dead. AI is a, a starting point. It can be refined. It can be improved. Depending on how good you are at prompting, it can also sound indistinguishable from human written content. So I don't think so, but I think the mass pages where you're not even looking at the content that you're releasing, I think that's the stuff that's going to be like number one on Google's hit list. Yeah, that makes sense. If you look like if you look at like Freshers Live, like I, I heard it's back, but even their titles, if they're like talking about a person, it's like, how tall are they? What is their weight? What is their birthday? And that's like, the title is like literally just like three questions, right? It's like pretty like garbage, to be honest. And that's the kind of stuff that really hurts the public. Like I said, again, the public perception of Google, that person going to the search results and being like, this is absolute shit. That's the stuff that they, I think, have to really address if they're going to remain a viable source of a viable method of research for so many people who've now been disillusioned. If you look at Reddit and you do site search Reddit, Google sucks or stuff like that, like it's all over the place, right? There's just so much sentiment out there that smart, educated people are actually losing their faith in Google. What do you think is the best way to use AI for SEO then? Definitely just enhancing your workflows. Even just before this call, I was in in chat gpt and i asked it for synonyms for software so it came up with platform tools um, solution different things like system things like that and then my next question was create me a re2 regex that contains all of those phrases in them and then i go to search console i put that in and now i have real data in terms of how people are describing my SaaS client software it just it it really enhances your workflows makes you a million times more efficient. You can take that anywhere. You can take it to spreadsheets. You can take it to regex. You can to do if you're coding with it, there's really no limit. But I think just asking, like I've seen complete nonsense on LinkedIn where people are like, 
chat GPT, write me an article that will rank on Google. Like yeah, that yeah. kind of shit that people are doing, the easy button, it's pretty much good for anything else but that. Yeah, that makes sense. Would you even say that the strength of ChatGPT is content creation? Or would you say it's the data and the things that you can do with the data around your workflows? Yeah, I don't love it for content creation. I've done lots of testing. I had a note on something that I called tone optimization, where I essentially asked, I did a comparison between Gemini Advanced and ChatGPT and said, give me like three tones that I could, or give me 10 tones that I could adopt to write X topic. Then I picked the three tones that I liked to use a primary, secondary, and tertiary tone. And uh, ChatGPT was just awful at that. Uh, but whereas Gemini Advanced did a much better job and basically produced indistinguishable content. I think one of the cool things about ChatGPT is actually creating tools and even WordPress. Yeah. Like it's really good at that. Right? Yeah. I remember you did a video on my bookmarklets, right? Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. That was one of my first videos that actually blew up, I think. So nice. thanks to you. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Glad to see it. How do you feel about the future of SEO in general? For example, a lot of people worried niche sites are over the, the 16 sites that are actually dominating Google in terms of search traffic. What are your expectations there? I have positioned myself in such a way to work with SaaS companies. And these are companies that are well-funded and uh, have resources to hire very good writers and also invest in excellent SEO and all that kind of stuff. I think there's a lot of long-term viability in, in B2B especially. Uh, but when it comes to niche sites, and like you said, Glenn's article about the 16 companies that dominate Google, it's a pretty tough game. If you just look at the keywords that you want to rank for, if you have a site about camping tents or whatever, and you put that into a tool like keyword.com share of voice, and you look at who's ranking, it's going to be pretty tough to crack the top 10 of that share of voice, right? And even there's this morning, I actually released a note with a link to a video uh, uh, that Google produced in 2019 called A Trillion Searches, No Easy Answers. And in the middle of that video, somewhere they're interviewing the search engineers, and he just straight up said, like, authority is the solution to getting rid of low quality content in the SERPs, right? So just favoring the health lines and the web MDs and all those huge mega sites of the world. And they're also producing content on a mass scale and getting rewarded. So it's a bit tough, but at the SEO mastery summit, I'm going to be talking about how to crack that sort of B2B SaaS industry in terms of what you need to do to be a consultant in that space. And hopefully we'll be able to help some people do just that. Nice. And do you prefer to use ChatGPT or what's your favorite AI model? Right now I'm experimenting with Gemini Advanced heavily. I don't know. I just, I really like it. I'm obviously a bit like I'm dancing with the the devil that can take, take me down, but <clears throat> I really like Gemini Advanced for things like research, right? For example, right now with our clients, I just asked our project manager to show me like all the trends that are happening in each of the client's industries. And, and Gemini Advance is just really excellent for that kind of stuff where it's able to tap the web a lot more easily natively than, than chat GPT and, and come up with, and also corroborate its answers with the web. I'm a fan of Gemini right now, but I'll still use chat GPT as well. And then, uh, and then, yeah, there's other, obviously other models too, like Claude, that, that I actually just got access to. So I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that. Claude is really good, actually. It's very smart. And also the context window is massive. They did some tests where, for example, they gave ChatGPT a large block of text and then put a little sort of needle in the haystack test to check the content. And then they tested that versus Claude. And Claude is a lot better at dealing with big context windows. Also, when I've tested the content in terms of AI detection, which a lot of people don't care about. When you actually test it, Claude usually comes out as 100% human. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I've been impressed with it thus far, but actually there were like a lot of issues getting it in Canada for some reason where I'm at. Oh. Yeah, so just starting to play with it now. Have you seen any examples of websites that did really well during the core update so far? Obviously, again, it's early days, but... I have to look at like some of the shit that Lily Ray put out that on she put out on LinkedIn. I don't know if I have one, to be honest, other than Reddit and LinkedIn. Uh, do you have any worries of being targeted publicly? 
definitely. If I'm being completely frank and honest, I am. There's no doubt that if you were Google, you have unlimited resources. Don't you think you'd have people in every Facebook group watching videos, monitoring things, and just keeping tabs on what's going on? And it'd be foolish for them not to do that. So I'm pretty careful and measured when I recommend stuff. And I've also been pretty consciously not promoting any AI SEO tools, not because I don't think that they're good, but because I don't want to be responsible for someone misusing them and and getting themselves in trouble. What do you think is safe to talk about? What do you think is not safe to talk about? Definitely AI is still safe. It's You'd be foolish not to leverage AI every day in your workflow. So I have no problems talking about it for enhancing content, analyzing content, telling me what topics I could be adding to my content. Um, If I'm looking at my topical map to ask me, asking it to fill this out and explore new areas. I think that the things that are, you know, not safe is obviously anything overtly black hat. Talking about links, I think there's still a conversation that needs to be done about links. And SEO Notebook in January, we dedicated an an entire month to to link building tactics. So I know a lot of the White Hat SEOs are not going to even touch links. But as long as you're not like, go to this resource and buy this link and like giving people instructions on how to do all that, I think you're still pretty safe to talk about it. What do you expect from Google in the future? More of this, to be honest. There, like, I think that on this case, in, in, this, in this last update, they likely found footprints uh, on people's websites, things that are like overt mistakes, right? As an AI language model kind of co- content and, and finding that and just making a quick list and penalizing those sites pretty severely. I'm not saying that every site that got hit did that, but that would be a very scalable way to, to send a message from Google. I think that they'll probably continue to crack down on smaller sites using mass AI content. It's very easy for them to look at the publishing schedule of a website and be like, is that even possible with human written content? And we just can't believe anything that they say either. They said themselves in their documentation, AI content is not against Google's guidelines and then look at what they did. I think that any SEO needs to really take all their stuff with a grain of salt. And I think that the circles that we operate in, that's common knowledge, but I don't, I I think that there's still a large contingent of people who are naive to that and just listen and, or, and, or think that maybe this is the last heavy handed update like this, but I can almost guarantee you that it's not going to be. Yeah, that makes sense. What about when it comes to link building then? How would you recommend getting backlinks? My series on link building came up with a ton of amazing link building tactics. I think the one that I liked best was from a guy named Mohammed Abid. And he basically said you can go and purchase a link on one website and then approach another site and say, I can get you a link on this. And then you have a three-way link exchange without actually owning the one one component of that three-way link exchange. So I think that's a pretty interesting thing because it can net you links on like HubSpot and G2 and big sites like that. Yeah, that's an interesting one. So like a three-way link exchange. Yeah, except you don't, You there's one component of that exchange that they're literally just buying a, a built. They're not buying a link for themselves. They're buying a link for the link, the site that's going to exchange that link. So you're technically not even buying a link for yourself. And do you use any type of like PR link building or anything like that? Yeah, definitely. I partner with Ferry Kazoni. So I, I've worked with Search Intelligence now for two, two years, two and a half years. And I've also known Ferry for a very long time. Both him and I started out our businesses in 2020 and Zoomed and stuff like that before we really achieved a lot of success and grew together. It's been amazing to see his journey and his influence on LinkedIn in particular. And uh, he's also been a great partner to SEO Notebook. He has literally advertised in SEO Notebook for about a year and a half every week. I have a really great relationship with him and I I really can't recommend his uh, service highly enough. How are you getting backlinks with PR then? We're making like stories, right? So essentially looking at a lot of the work actually stems from creating 
stories based on search trends, right? So we were working with a crypto client and when Elon Musk bought Twitter, the searches for Dogecoin spiked up, right? So we basically released a statement for that. And then we got picked up by like the street and really heavy hitting finance websites and, and crypto websites. And, and then they link to us because we're the source of that information. Mm-hmm. And before you create any content, do you have any AI workflows that you recommend, whether it's for content outlines or keyword research, this sort of thing? Uh, yeah, definitely. We, what we do is we essentially collect different headings and with like from the SERP as well, you know, rewording them and taking different concepts that are being discussed on the SERP and creating headings for those. And then mixing that with headings that we have from AI. And then we use a prompt to essentially order those headings into the logical content outline. And, and that's what we've had a lot of success with. That's cool. And do you use it for keyword research too? Yes and no. I'll use it to fill out a keyword list. Personally, I love Google Search Console, especially obviously you have to have traffic and impressions and stuff like that. But I love Google Search Console as a starting point. So for example, that regex that I mentioned earlier on, that can give you like myriad ways of describing a SaaS product. Once you have all those descriptions, you can take that to ChatGPT or uh, Gemini or whatever LLM you're using and ask it to come up with similar keywords for that. I'm also an Ahrefs user, still an Ahrefs user. I know that there's a lot of people who haven't, uh, who, who've uh, disbanded from Ahrefs, but I'm still an Ahrefs user. And yeah, we also really leverage that highly in terms of keyword research. The thing is, and then, a- I'm sorry, the, the, again, uh, one more thing as well. I can't not mention Google as being like one of the go, you know, greatest of all time tools of keyword research. We're right now just automating one of my notes to do some like incredible stuff in terms of scraping the auto suggest and not just the auto suggest that's obvious, but actually what we do is Google the main keyword. And then in that same session, we delete that keyword and we start typing words like what is, how should, when does, and then Google starts feeding you all these related keywords to that keyword that you originally typed in. And, and it's just an absolute goldmine. And then people also ask related searches and whatnot. I heavily re- leverage Google for keyword research and then I use chat to, to refine it, isolate it, pair it up and select only the relevant ones. And then when it comes to content creation, one thing I saw, for example, on your dating website was you have everything laid out on one page, like a huge guide, but then you can click through to different sections of it, right? So you you try and answer everything, but inside one guide. Yeah, essentially. So that, that website's called thematchartist.com. And on the left-hand side, so what we do is have like basically silos for all the major apps. So we have one for Hinge, Bumble, Tinder, et cetera. And then on that left-hand sidebar, we've got individual articles like best first text on twin- Tinder, uh, what are the best photos for Tinder and stuff like that. And then the user ends up on that page and then they just click around because they see all this relevant content to them. So I've used that uh, strategy on um, another site called BrainStation. It works extremely well. And yeah, we just try to comprehensively answer all those questions. And what we also did with that and leveraging AI was we took, we took all the intake surveys. So that site focuses on online dating photography and we, they, every time they have a prospect and a new client come on, they essentially fill out a survey on all their pain points and whatnot. There's frustrations with online dating and all that. So we fed that into advanced data analysis in chat GPT and basically asked it to analyze what are all like the popular pain points that their customers have and, and then work that into the content. Awesome. And then post content creation, are there, do you have any tips for leveraging AI? Yeah, um, I've actually got a note called post article prompts. Some of the different things in there were Matt Diggity popularized the idea of looking at Google helpful content guidelines and asking chat to essentially read my article and then help reference it against the Google helpful content guidelines and give me suggestions on, on how that can be used. Little things like that, fact checking in the articles, we used to do FAQ schema, but obviously that doesn't work anymore. So there's, yeah, I think there's 10 prompts in total in that note. And it's, yeah, that would be like our, our process for once the article is written. That makes sense. And then you don't use a FAQ schema anymore? 
when I look in my search console, it's been severely deprecated, right? So we're just not getting the impressions that we were getting previously. But yeah, we're not currently using it. Awesome. Well, there's some great tips there, definitely. I think what we'll do as well is we'll get the transcript from this video and then take some of the workflows that you've mentioned and put it into an SAP that people can get at the end. So that'd be really good. Sounds is there anything else you want to say before you go? No, just thanks for having me on. I've obviously known about you and I also congratulate you on the success of your channel. You've really done something truly remarkable. So honored to be a guest. Thank you. And what's the best way to get in touch with you? I know obviously you've got the newsletter. Yeah, seonotebook.com is pretty much where I direct everybody. I email out one actionable piece of strategy, like the one that Julian mentioned in his book bookmarklets video. So every Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, you'll receive an email from me. And my goal with SEO Notebook is always to give you something actionable that you can try the same day that will have a, a great effect on your website. There's been so many uh, amazing stories of people who've implemented my strategies. If you look at the site, testsigma.com, Tief, he implemented pretty much one note per week and uh, just exploded the traffic on that website. So I love obviously hearing that as I'm sure you do as well. When people actually put your advice into action, super rewarding. So SEO notebook.com is great. Din is also awesome. Steve Toth, T-O-T-H and uh, Facebook as well. Awesome. All right. Thanks very much not, for being on. Uh, yeah. Not too active on Twitter. Have an account, but just don't go there too often. Any reason why? I can imagine, but... It's just a lot of work. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty happy with what I have right now. We're doing really well as an agency and I'm just busy enough. So I don't really feel the need to have to go to another platform when I'm already super happy with what I'm doing. Yeah, that's it. And you've done a great job, man. Massive audience. So good on you. Thanks, man. All right. Cheers, then. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. So thanks so much for watching. If you want to check out Steve Toff, his website is available at seonotebook.com and you can get a free newsletter out there. I've also taken the transcript from today and then turned it into some useful prompts and workflows, Steve Toff style, based on what he said. And you can get that for free, links in the comments and description. And if you to check out my chat GPT SEO course as well, we've got loads of prompts on keyword research, internal links, SEO link building, topical maps, niche selection, EAT. And we're also starting to build out a new AI SEO quality control section, including Steve's prompts right there. Now, if you do want to book in a free SEO strategy session about how to get more leads, traffic, and sales, and we can answer any questions that you have directly on the call, and you'll get an SEO domination plan. Plus, you'll discover the secrets of link building. You'll learn the best link building strategy for your website, and you'll discover how to create outranking competitors for link building. If you want to book that in, feel free to check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.